Hi everybody, welcome to Alkira Design Zone. My name is Ken and this is Julian from our field sales team. And we're here to talk about firewall service insertion using the Alkira Network Cloud today. So Julian, why don't you take it away? Yeah, hey Ken, thanks for having me on again. Now I'm gonna jump straight into it and just have a talk through what are the use cases? So why are people consolidating firewall services into the Alkira Cloud? I've got four use cases summarized here. So the first one being cloud firewall consolidation. So taking firewalls are distributed across multiple cloud providers, consolidating them into Alkira and reusing them across all those providers. Uh, regional internet security, so using the firewall capacity in the CXPs globally to provide security for internet breakout. WAN firewall consolidation is another one. So customers may have firewalls distributed through branches and data centers across the globe and want to consolidate them into a, a central location and reduce the number of instances. And finally, firewall auto-scaling. So the ability to scale up and scale down firewall capacity on demand to really optimize that resource usage. Now, what I wanna do is drill down on one of these use cases, which is that cloud firewall consolidation by talking through the challenges customers see with deploying firewalls in the cloud. You can see here, I've got three representations across three different cloud providers, AWS, Azure, and GCP, showing the sort of topologies that are used to integrate firewalls into those networks. Now, the thing that stands out here is that it's very complex, right? So integrating firewalls is complex, and what we end up with is instance sprawl across providers, but also across use cases, where I may have multiple instances of firewall, even in a single provider, to deal with different use cases, be that east-west or north-south traffic movement. Another challenge that we see is state management becomes difficult, particularly as I go into multiple cloud providers and I wanna secure flows between those providers. So making sure that the flows always go through the same firewall and so we don't end up with half open connections. And another related issue is source IP obfuscation. So part of the way that the state management is managed in these cloud providers is to source NAT traffic, which means that we lose the source IP address information as the flow goes to that end application. Finally, the traffic redirection in all of these providers is really all or nothing. So that what that means is if I wanna have firewalling between two endpoints, I need to put a firewall in the path and inspect all traffic, not just the traffic that I'm interested in for firewall inspection. And what we end up with is inefficient resource usage where certain firewalls may be overutilized, other firewalls might be underutilized. And what I really want is a common pool of firewall capacity that scales up and down on demand. So how does this look like with Alkira? So what I have here is a representation of the Alkira global network. Now you can look back at some of our earlier videos to get a better understanding of how this works, as well as how network policy works. Uh, but at the top here, I have our connectors that are placed in different groups. Just this blue box here is representing the, our, our global routed fabric across multiple CXPs. And then down the bottom here, I have some Alkira hosted firewalls. So these are firewalls that have been spun up from our network services marketplace and can be inserted into various flows. Now, the first thing to note here is that these firewalls sit out of path. And so no traffic will be redirected into them until I introduce some network policy. Now this network policy essentially allows you to match on various criteria, being source and destination connector or group, as well as the six tuple of the flow that's moving through the fabric. Now, once I've matched that traffic, I've got three options that I can really do to those flows. So the first is permit a flow. So this first option is I'm permitting that flow, so I'm gonna allow communication. The next option is just to deny, and this enforcement is native on the Alkira fabric. So I'm gonna deny communication between these two endpoints for that specific match criteria. And then the third option is I can service insert. Now, when we do that service insert, we transparently redirect the flow to one of the firewalls that we have hosted in the Alkira CXP. Now, when we do that redirection, we're doing it transparently. So source and destination IP remain the same. They are unchanged. We're also taking care of state management and load balancing across multiple firewalls if required. We'll also auto scale that firewall cluster up and down as demand increases or reduces based on seasonal demand or other sporadic demand you may have in your uh, environment. Yeah, so you're essentially offloading the life cycle of the firewalls to the Alkira CXP while still be able to leverage it as if it was inside of your own network. So think about this as we're going through this presentation, how the Alkira policy framework can actually help you in your long-term security strategy 
as well as essentially assist you in your security journey, right? As you're migrating workloads into the cloud. Yeah, thanks Ken, that's great. So what I want to do now is just quickly take you through the topology that we're gonna use for this demo. And so Ken's gonna take you through the demo in a moment. And what we can see here, this is similar to topologies we've used in earlier videos. On the left-hand side, we have our on-prem locations, so data center and branches. On the right-hand side, we have our cloud connectors as well as internet breakout. Now they've been placed into different groups and segments, as you can see at the top here. Now in the middle, you can see the representation of the CXPs that is interconnecting all these different endpoints. And what we've added here is the checkpoint cloud guard firewall that we're gonna be redirecting traffic to using network policy. We've also added this VPC here in AWS that's hosting the checkpoint management SMS server. And Ken's gonna take you through a bit of a demo of how all of this hangs together. Right, so we're going to demo three use cases. First is security service insertion for all traffic between east-west traffic. So specifically from the AWS West uh, VPC there to the Azure VNet, the two subnets there. Uh, second use cases, we're going to do selective traffic insertion and inspection for traffic from branch one going to the Azure VNet. And then lastly, we're going to do a firewall service insertion for all traffic going to the internet. So specifically from data center one there on the left, going to the internet in the region. All right, now we'll jump straight into the demo. So first use case, we're going to look at traffic inspection of east-west traffic. We can see all of the policies um, that are configured showing on the right here. In this case, we're going to look at traffic inspection or firewall inspection of traffic generated from the AWS VPC here to the Azure VNet. And so here, if I extend this out and drill down into the policy, and we can just see that it's fairly straightforward where I'm scoping everything from apps to apps group. And then for any east-west traffic between the apps group, we'll get forwarded to the firewall. So next I'm going to walk you through the checkpoint uh, SMS, the security management server real quick. Here you can see, imagine this will be your checkpoint SMS that you've deployed yourself, you manage yourself. And these are the two firewalls, right? That we have deployed inside of the Alcara CXP, one for the East region, one for the West region. You have a uniform security policies configured. So for ease of demonstration, I've already configured a policy here to allow both east-west and north-south uh, traffic as well as traffic between the sites themselves and traffic going out to the internet and then by default there's a catch-all rule to drop everything like you would do for your enterprise network all right so next uh, we're actually going to demonstrate this live flow here i'm going to go ahead and ssh into a host that's behind the vpc uh, in AWS here. So here's the IP address of this host. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick curl to the web server that's in Azure. So there's one in the 120 subnet and another in the second subnet in Azure. Yeah, okay, Ken. So we can see that both of those work, but how do we know the traffic actually got inspected by the firewall? Yeah, so now if we go back to the checkpoint SMS, and if we jump to the log to monitor, and you can see if I just filter the traffic, the logs based on the IP address, this is essentially the host behind the uh, AWS VPC, we can see all of the flows that have been captured. Okay, and that's showing us those permit log options for those two curl operations. Yep, exactly. And now if, if I just go back to the portal here. For example, if I just ping really quick, I should be able to also see that traffic live as well. So previously we generated some web traffic and now I've generated ICMB traffic. And there it is, right? Okay, excellent. Awesome. So the next use case we're going to show is inspection of traffic for north-south traffic. And specifically in this case, we're going to do selective traffic 
inspection through the checkpoint firewall. So if I expand this policy here for north-south traffic, we've got a rule list matching only web traffic in this case, right? That are being sent to the checkpoint firewall and for everything else, uh, it will just bypass the firewalls and, and go directly through the Elkira CXPs. So I'm going to VNC into branch one client that's sitting behind this connector right here. And then we're going to generate traffic towards the same Azure web servers that are in the East region. So it's going across regions and we're going to show that that traffic is going to be, uh, if it's web traffic, it's going to be inspected by the checkpoint firewall and if it's ICMP or anything else, uh, it's going to bypass the firewall. Okay, so let's go into the branch client. I'm just going to refresh this a couple of times. So we generate some traffic and at the same time, I'm going to ping those Azure servers as well. Okay, excellent. So we can see that traffic's being permitted. Now, what would be great to see is, can you take us through how we can actually see this redirection occurring on the Alkira portal? Because obviously, it's just a subset of traffic being redirected. And how do we know, how can we monitor which flows are being redirected and which flows aren't being redirected? Yeah, definitely. So one thing I can do is I could, you know, obviously go into the checkpoint SMS to verify that only web traffic from my host behind branch one is getting redirect it, but we can also show you that visibility on the Alkira portal itself. So if I just click on analyze flow there, so I've gone into a diagnostic screen and if I click on analyze flow, it'll show me the flows that's been happening right in the last 15 seconds and it'll keep refreshing. You can see here the, the web traffic for destination port of 80 is in fact being sent through the checkpoint firewall. Um, and if I generate just ICMP again, what we should see is they would show up here and you can see it show that it is not being forwarded to the checkpoint firewall. Yeah, okay. And I think what we also see here is that the traffic's only being redirected to one of those firewalls, which I think is important. We can see it's going to West 1, which is where the source is. And we can see that in the service name there. And I think that's really important because uh, what we're not going to do is we won't redirect the traffic twice, even though it's moving across two different regions with separate firewalls instances. So we have intelligence within the forwarding fabric to say only redirect traffic to the firewall where the source exists. Don't do a double redirection, but make sure you also manage the state when you're doing that. And so it really optimizes that resource usage again by making sure we're not doubling up on our firewall resource consumption as we traverse those regions. Yeah, so if I filter based on the branch one client, which is 100 at 238, what we should see is we should only see web traffic, right? That are being service inserted through the firewall and then everything else like the ICMP traffic, we generate synthetically that is bypassing the firewall as expected. Yep. All right. And I think you've got one more that you're gonna take us through, right, Ken? Yep, exactly. So the last use case we have is basically for inspection of all traffic going out to the internet. If I show the policies again, and I think this really shows that regionalized internet egress use case, right? Yep. It will be for this policy right here. So you can see the scope is if I have anything, right? Doesn't matter if it's tagged with a group tag or not. If it's going out to any of these connectors with a internet group tag, then that traffic, regardless of uh, where it's going, where it's coming from, it will be service inserted through the checkpoint firewall. So I'm going to do this by generating traffic from a host sitting behind data center one here. First thing is I also want to show that this data center one client is also able to actually ping or reach the branch one client as well that we just showed in the last use case, right? And so from here, if I just go to www.elkira.com I should be um, able to see this traffic flow on the checkpoint SMS. So going back here, if I just filter based on the DC1 client, which is an IP address of 101.42. And now you can see, right, the traffic from that host behind data center one for everything going out to the internet. You can see that traffic being captured.
that's really all we want to show for today. So just now we essentially went through the three different use cases of using checkpoint firewall to inspect traffic for east-west traffic, north-south traffic, as well as, as any traffic going out to the internet. Julian, do you have anything else you want to cover today? No, I think that's, that's everything, Ken. I think you've covered it really well. So thanks so much for having me on again, and I look forward to doing future videos with you. All right. Great. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks, everyone.